On the 10th of March 2013, I'd photographed the southern sky at Cape Schenck. This video illustrates my workflow to take an astrophotograph from straight out of camera to a final processed photograph. On the night that I shot these images, I shot quite a few, so I loaded them up in Bridge and I just went through all the different exposures that I had to find the image that I felt would best represent the scene. And I finally found this particular image with a streak that really sang to me. I just double checked and made sure that there wasn't something that would work better, but at the end of the day I pretty much ascertained that that was the image that I wanted to work with. So once I ascertained which one it was, I went ahead and loaded it into Camera Raw. I then applied a little bit of lens correction and removed any chromatic aberration that might have occurred as a result of the use of the lens. I then had to make an artistic decision about my choice of white balance. And to achieve a cooler look, I either wanted to go with tungsten or fluorescent. Now, after trying these a couple of times, I decided to go with the tungsten white balance. I noticed that the horizon line wasn't quite horizontal, so that was easily fixed just using the ruler tool. This is where things got serious. This image was shot at a high ISO and is subject to a lot of noise. Now, in order to enhance this image, I had to crank up the exposure to make the bright areas look brighter. But I had to be careful to not overdo it because that would end up overwhelming the image with a lot of noise. Now, to further accentuate the stars and make them pop even more, I cranked up the highlight slider all the way. Now, the exposure and highlight slider certainly made the stars pop out, but in order to even further enhance them, I pulled back on the shadow slider. And this would also take out a fair bit of noise that was in the shadows. I applied a basic white point correction, nothing overwhelming, just a plus 35 on the white point slider. I similarly applied a black point correction of plus 25. I then cranked up the clarity, vibrance and saturation of the image. I used the values of 50, 5 and 5 respectively. I then applied a graduated filter to this image, running from the bottom to the top. My settings for this graduated filter were to reduce the exposure at the bottom and to go to a normal exposure where the horizon line lay. I then applied a second graduate filter on this image running from the top to the bottom. This one has slightly different settings. I've configured this filter to increase the exposure at the top of the image to bring out the stars even more. I've also set it to where the color balance shifts more towards the blue to add a slightly more blue tinge to the top of the image. Now that's all that I did in Adobe Camera Raw. At this stage I went ahead and opened the image up in Adobe Photoshop. Now, a couple of things worth noting is that there's a lot of noise in the image and I needed to enhance the stars even more. Now, I used a couple of plugins to do this but there's more than one way to do it. I started off by enhancing the stars and to do this I launched a plugin called Nick Color Effects which is one of my favorite plugins. There's only one filter that I've used over here in Nick Color Effects and that is the Pro Contrast tool where I've enhanced the dynamic range by about 20%. On hitting the apply button, Nick Color Effects applies the selected filters onto the image in a separate layer. Now at this stage I'd certainly got the stars to pop, but in the process of doing this I've introduced a fair bit of noise into the image and I needed to clean this up. I did this using a plugin called Noiseware from Imagenomics. Now I didn't do anything fancy in Noiseware, I just used one of the default settings. In this case, just because the sheer amount of noise that's present in the image, I used the full suppression setting. I did try experimenting with the night shot setting, but I just realized that the amount of noise that was in there was very, very high, and I had to go for the most aggressive setting that Noiseware had available. At this stage, I was satisfied with the way on how the image looked. I flattened all the layers. I then cropped the image. I tend to favor cropping my images based on the golden ratio, or 1.618. Once cropped, the image was ready to be saved. I saved the image as a full quality JPEG file. So there you have it, a complete start to finish workflow on how to take an astrophotograph from straight out of camera to a finished photograph. There's more than one way to do it. This is just the way on how I do it.